Exodune was this weekend. We went to Exodune. Me and Jason went to Exodune. Mickey wasn't there. Justin's never been there. So what um, is Exodune, Dave? Exodune's I'm, a LARP think... that Jason and I have been participating in as long as you've known us. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. As long as you've known me, anyway. I've, you you yeah. might have known him longer than that. I've known but... him longer than I've known about Exodune because I remember Exodune's conception. Yeah. Um, but, no, I've never been. Yeah, you should go. Yep. It's a great time. You should go. You so, should. LARPing, I, th- I feel as though uh, if we introduce ourselves to our audience every day, we might as well explain what a LARP is because... Every day? Every day. Uh, look up LARPing on Google. There it is. Or exodune.com. It's an solved. acronym. Now, we talked about it in, like, episode nine. Um, yeah, one, one of the pre-video episodes. Back when we used to announce every episode as the first episode. Which so we that, still do. This is our first episode. So that people couldn't keep track of which episode they were on. Yeah, in case we had a really shit episode, we'd be like, oh, it's our first episode. It's our first episode. <laughs> we're just learning how to work this thing. Yeah. It's electricity. This magical box thing here. I we're don't know. We're still learning. But it's an acronym. It stands for Live Action Role Play. Yep. And it spans anything from from fantasy era mm. like Dungeons and Dragons style to actual like historical recreations of yeah. the Civil War to futuristic science fiction battles in a pretend space station. Right. You know, like, now I wonder... Just having this thought. Has you know what you should do is talk into your microphone. Has anyone ever done a LARP, mm-hmm. like around like detective case, like done like a detective LARP? Technically, uh, I think that's called mystery you, dinner like, theater. Yeah, murder mystery theater kind of thing. That's that that would be LARPing. Would it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just you're... like just like reenactments are are also called LARPs, and in fact, in Europe, they don't really make a distinction between reenactments and LARPing. Uh, whereas we kind of do here, but understandably so. I think I think, but explain what you were actually going for. I mean, it, basically that sort of thing where mm. you're you get a lot of people who are all playing different roles, and it wouldn't necessarily be like a clue scenario, though mm. that would be cool. But I'm pretty sure that that's kind of the mystery dinner theater thing. Uh, but just having a like clues and different, they maybe serial murders. Yeah. Having somebody be the serial killer, and uh, I think they'd definitely be shorter one-offs. It wouldn't be an extended sort of yeah. Well, that's play something, after play after play. That's something that that could and has been done at LARPs before. It typically, as something within the LARP itself, like a smaller yeah, quest right. or because something. Because imagine like trying to have forty gumshoes <laughs> that are all sleuthing these clues, like. You've only rooting got, crime scenes. Yeah, they're gonna come in there. They're gonna destroy the evidence. You're going to leave like very specific things laid out for people to find. And then you're going to have 40 people come in a giant <laughs> wave with magnifying glasses and <laughs> stupid hats. Oh, and that sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited. Let's let's make that happen. I mean, it will be awesome until they like, they're like, all right, well, why didn't we figure it out? And they'll blame you. Yeah. It'll be your fault. It won't be because they messed up the crime scene. You should have expected that. You should have anticipated that how? and created multiple crime scenes. For <laughs> how, how do you know that I did? Didn't expect that because I know you. Yeah, yeah. too shy. Right. Your right. printer doesn't even work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an inside joke. Insiders. Yep. So, so we, we had we had X doing this weekend. It was hot and rainy, and it was hot or rainy. Now, the, the game that we play, Exodune, and, and Mickey plays occasionally as well. Yep. Um, he's a, an avid LARPer. You you play several games I, I, believe. I do and see you guys talk about being hot and everything there is uh indoor larps as well so there's two different yeah two different flavors of larp you have your salon larp which is more of your tabletop environment mm-hmm. it's usually more social themed is that i think i've also heard of, of parlor larp parlor larp as well. okay. salon larp parlor yeah. larp it's usually more of the machiavellian type political structures that you okay. wind up getting into where the buffer larp is Let's go hit my friends, and right? Stuff. And it's more combat focused. Uh, so the salon LARP can definitely like. I have a lot of friends that can't be physically active, and and they still <laughs> get a lot of. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah. They still get a lot of the the good role play and stuff right. like that from the the salon or partly LARP. And you also have the 
complete opposite of the salon LARP, which is full combat LARPing. Like the which, SCA. And yeah, or like uh, Dagger Ear is kind of like... Yeah, where, where there's, there's zero There's virtually story. no roleplay at all. <laughs> I think the, mo- the most roleplay is like, you can pick something, you can pick a name. I, th- I, th- I think that's the kind of, uh, the kind of LARP that they showed in... Um, What's that movie with Paul oh, Rudd? Role, role models. Role models. It's similar. That's uh. That was that, a boffer LARP. That was a boffer LARP. It wasn't completely role or uh, completely combat. There was some role play aspects to it. That was a very stripped down version of what LARPing actually is. Is what they showed in role models. Or at least what we do. Or yeah, Exodune is very specific in it. It is about storytelling. Yeah. So the whole game involves big stories being written up and then the players getting pushed into being involved in those intricate stories. A lot of LARPs are just random encounters. You and your buddies get dressed up in whatever period clothing and you hang out and random situations will occur to you and generally you'll fight or talk your way out of them. Uh, whereas you know the, the game that we play is, is much more involved much more intricate but it's also a lot more difficult to grasp every aspect of it because it is so, so vast. big yeah. yeah i was actually reading an article about it because i think it it, it definitely draws some similarities to uh dungeons and dragons am i right like there are some similarities in terms of uh uh, like skills and uh, yeah. abilities, attributes, things like Depending that. Depending on how the game is built, uh, the one that Jarrett and I built is very similar to uh, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition. But well, I was reading this article that was saying how uh, like Dungeons & Dragons has uh, now developed uh, an online like digital version of the game yeah. to like have like a a digital dungeon master and things like that where it presents the scenarios for you okay. and, and you can go in and build your character and it tracks everything for you so it's not just on paper anymore. It's essentially the same game, only it's all on the computer. Like, you track everything on the computer. So, Wizards of the Coast, the guys who make the original D&D, have yeah. been pushing similar for years. Uh, before the Roll20 system came out that they're using now that you can actually you know have dice on, they had what they called a ISRP, which is like Internet uh, something role play. Uh, okay. And it was just a chat server mm. that you would roll your D&D character on. And they had little moderators and stuff like that. So you could do everything uh, but roll. Right. And then eventually they stepped up to having dice spots on the chat. Mm. And now they're pushing the, the roll 20 where it's more online. But that online experience that you're going to have is still going to be more, more like a tabletop game. Than an actual LARP, but I, I think that would be that would be pretty cool in the sense that it's it is that tabletop, but you have one you can play with anybody anytime. Yeah. But it also it's keeping track of all of this stuff for you. Yeah. You you don't have to carry around binders full of papers and bestiaries and things like that, where it's all on that screen and you can play with your friends. Right. I've only ever tried D and D. I think once or twice, and. Uh, I don't know. It, it it didn't go well so much for me, but uh, that's because um, you were playing with people that were kind of dicks. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, was and one I, of them you? Uh, I was he was actually, he was trying not to be a dick. Uh, he was actually the least dickish one. I was the dungeon right? master, so I was okay. trying to include him into right. the party, and the party wasn't having it. Mm. And I was like, they wanted no part of me. And it was really <laughs> just one player. In the party, who was giving him a hard time? Milf's with, acid arrow. But uh, he. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was his name. Uh, that was something that he said because he was looking at a uh, one of our fellow players had his wife playing with us, and uh, she was wearing sort of a revealing top, and he was looking at her when he was casting a spell, and he said, "Milf's acid arrow." <laughs> And we all had a really good chuckle about it. Now, there's only like 1% of nerds are going to even understand what that means. But MELF, M-E-L-F, uh-huh. is a well-written mage from, I think, Forgotten Realms or Dragonlance. Okay. One of the AD&D ad- ad- campaigns. Okay, it's, gotcha. it's a D&D staple. Hmm. And this spell is something he created, and it was named after him. So it is called Melf's Acid Arrow. Okay. This 
guy was looking at our friend's hot wife, <laughs> and instead of casting Melf's acid arrow, he Freudian slipped yeah. and said, I'd cast Milf's acid arrow. And, you know, everybody just stops, <laughs> and we all look, and then we look at her cleavage, and then we look back at him, and we're like, we get it. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? Did the spell work? I think so. I, I think so. Yeah. I, I don't fucking remember that well. <laughs> So uh, something there are everything leading up to where <laughs> exactly. where that happened. Well, and then, uh, whatever, I'm know. familiar well, with the campaign yeah, and, the, yeah. and the world setting, but <laughs> as far as what the players did, ah, uh, right. who cares? 